You guys know why this aggravates me so much? Every time I walk into Whole Foods, I see this nicely labeled plastic bottle with complete bullshit marketing collagen peptides, collagen protein powder, collagen protein bars. I'm losing my mind. Are these people marketing geniuses? Because they're putting processed agrochemical refined powder waste in a plastic tub and charging $40 for it and people are eating it up. This is way beyond the carnivores shilling collagen. This is big scale in every single supermarket. And this is obviously special interest funded corporations taking this low quality waste and trying to sell it as a health product. You know, they've created these fake ideas about collagen powder and to a lesser extent glycine to sell highly processed feedlot beef powders. Notice how none of these are grass fed or organic. Even if glycine and collagen are beneficial, which we will debate shortly, you shouldn't have to take these synthetic powders as there are natural high quality alternatives. Why take something that is processed with solvents, chemicals, poison when you can consume a food product? You know, it's one thing if you couldn't get collagen or glycine from food, but we can. The reason you supplement vitamin D3 is because it's unrealistic. Not everyone can tan outside for five hours a day. People work nine to five jobs. You know, magnesium is from soil depletion. We need to supplement magnesium because you can't get it from a food. You know, vitamin K2 could be lack of access to fermented foods or gut problems, but consuming glycine or collagen is, is absurd. It's in like every single food there is. Here is a flow process for collagen. Raw material, washing, acidulation, washing, extraction, filtration, hydrolyzed by protease, decolor filtration, sterilization, and drying. And this is a flow chart for glycine. Monochloroacetic acid, ammoniacal liquor, urotropine, ammonation, crystallize out, centrifugation, tech grade glycine, drying in vacuum, centrifugation, recrystallize, raw glycine, tech grade glycine, deionized water, activated carbon, filtration, filter residue, filtrate, leave, cooling, drying and vacuum. Back to that point earlier. Notice how these are never labeled organic or grass fed. You can't have organic collagen because of the crappy animal waste they're boiling down. Plus those synthetic chemicals, acids and solvents will never be grass fed, organic or natural. How do you go from bovine skin and animal beef tissue to a white powder? How much do you have to process it? That is an absurd difference. It's one thing to go from like a magnesium stone in nature to some magnesium powder or to extract some vitamin D from sheep wool, but these processes are so complicated. Is there even any collagen or glycine left? Do they even test that final product? There are many natural foods that contain collagen and glycine, bone broth being a popular one, but there were many indigenous groups in perfect health subsisting off of only fish. And I would argue that bone broth is more of a modern preparation due to its vessel requirement. No natural human diet contains the glycine ratios recommended by these experts that are selling you the products. Plus, once you look into the biochemistry of what's happening, collagen and glycine are not needed in these supplemental excess forms. First off, if your goal by consuming collagen is to increase the collagen in your skin, that's not how it works. Your body requires certain vitamins and amino acids to synthesize that tissue. Collagen only provides the amino acids. You know, you don't see people eating bacon or pork rinds for their skin health, but that's what collagen powder is akin to. <laughs> The substance in this collagen that people are allegedly benefiting from is the amino acid hydroxyproline. Thing is, the body recycles amino acids from old cells on a daily basis at about 93% effectiveness. The actual nutrients needed for optimal skin health are amino acids, which are in all animal foods, vitamin C, as well as iron. This activates all of the required enzymes and cofactors needed but you still need to reduce inflammation in the diet to optimize antioxidant pathways. Otherwise, your body won't be able to synthesize collagen as much as it can. Liver is the perfect food for this. It's pretty safe to say I have the best skin out of all the carnivores and I've never used collagen. On the topic of glycine, the argument for using it is that glycine will lower methionine 
and high methionine is associated with shorter lifespan because it increases homocysteine and homocysteine can cause oxidative stress. But the main nutrients needed to process methionine are vitamin B12 and vitamin B9. Glycine only plays a small role. So why are we focusing on glycine as opposed to these other vitamins? Because you can't make a vitamin B12 or vitamin B9 supplement from feedlot beef waste. As we said, in this methylation cycle, in order to metabolize homocysteine, we require vitamin B12, vitamin B9, and vitamin B6. It's more likely your diet is going to be lacking in these vitamins than glycine because glycine isn't even needed. In the folate cycle, vitamin B6 actually converts the amino acid serine into glycine, and this study shows that serine is about 20% more effective than glycine in methionine production. That means that consuming a natural food which contains both serine and glycine, as well as those B vitamins, is exactly what we want. Nothing here indicates that more glycine is beneficial. To emphasize that point, the study this idea originated from was on rats who were fed isolated methionine, then when they were given glycine, their lifespan improved. But all you're doing by giving them glycine is replicating the natural amino acid ratio of animal foods that they should have been eating in the first place as opposed to isolated methionine. In the context of a carnivore diet, where serine and glycine intake is high, I would argue that the better way to optimize these pathways for collagen synthesis is through increased B vitamin intake. You know what's really funny? Carnivores are always fear-mongering about oxalates. Oxalates are gonna destroy you. You're just detoxing oxalates. Anything wrong with you is oxalate detox. But did you know that consuming collagen increases oxalates in the body? hydroxyproline ingestion, and urinary oxalate and glycolate excretion. Our results also revealed that the kidney absorbs significant quantities of hydroxyproline and glycolate, and their metabolism to oxalate in this tissue warrants further consideration, even for glycine on its own. Different effects of oral glycine and methionine on urinary lithogenic substances. Glycine caused a significant increase of urinary oxalate above baseline, without change in calciurea. The science shows that we don't need these specific amino acids in these artificial amounts, particularly glycine and hydroxyproline. Our ancestral dietary habits indicate that they were not making bone broth or sprinkling glycine powder on their steaks. The best foods for glycine are skin on. So poultry, wild caught fish, even shellfish are great options. You know, we have some quails on Frankie's syringe meat, uh, you can pick up some skin-on salmon at a local fish market, you know, suck down a dozen oysters on a Friday night at a restaurant. You know, those are all excellent ways to make sure you're getting high amounts of bioavailable amino acids with the corresponding B vitamins needed for metabolic pathways. You know, I can understand how easily people fall into these marketing traps and it's despicable when you realize that these people are literally selling you feedlot beef waste. Seriously. These companies will poison you just to make $10, an insignificant amount of money. And I don't know if these people are still pushing glycine. I think they moved on to honey or something else now. Uh, but uh, they're in for a rude awakening when they realize I wasn't eating honey. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this saves you guys a few dollars and you don't buy any of this crap. Uh, if you did, reach out to me with a receipt and I'll give you a discount on Frankie syringe meat or something because... It's it's discouraging that you know these people take advantage of their marketing powers, but whatever. Uh, if you guys could please like the video, leave a comment down below. Of course, share the video on social media. Put these in carnivore groups. Let people know about these scam products. And if you do want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow's video.